Okay, the other request was to show the cuff trick again. And then the other request was to leave his face because somebody wanted to see it shaved. <laughs> He's been in an Asian fusion trim for uh, about a year and a half now, maybe two years. So he's going back into a poodle trim because we're going to show in over Labor Day in Perry. So, so he's going to, we're going to try to get his grand championship. Yeah, we are. We are. He says, I'll do it. I'll do it. Well, I'll do whatever you want, Mom. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys think is the reason? for the saddle trim. Hmm. Okay, cuff trick is to comb it down, pull it all the way down farther than you think it should be. And he's had full feet. He's been in a full Asian trim, so we've got a lot of fluff here. That's another thing. When you get when you get good at it, it won't take you very long. And if he's not overgrown like this guy, do the same thing from the back. Pull your hand, pull the whole leg down, but pull your hand down further than you think it should be because you can always move it up. You can't put it back. So it's pretty much done. I'll probably I'll probably do it again because it's a little low in the back, but you get the idea. So when we get the rest of the trim going, I'll finish that. So the reason a lot of people think, oh well, I'm not going to do a saddle trim in my grooming salon. You're probably not. But the principles of all of these pattern trims are the same. Okay, so one of the reasons I wanted to show you this trim is because again, you're cutting the dog into thirds and we're creating angles and we're creating what we want to see no matter what pattern you put the dog in. You might get some little old lady that comes in with her little toy poodle and wants it in a Royal Dutch, uh, something you've never heard of before that you got to look up on the internet. You can apply these principles to all of those trims and make that look better and not look as ridiculous. Um, and don't get me wrong, I put some patterns on dogs 20 years ago that looked ridiculous, so I'm not judging, <laughs> okay? It's just that I've learned and I'm hoping to pass these, this information on to you. So all of the angles that we look for when we're building a top knot on a poodle, we wanna look for the front of that rear toe and we wanna go straight up like that. Okay, so watch those angles. All of these angles lead somewhere. Where is this? That's pretty much almost splitting the dog in half, correct? That's also where you want your tuck up to be. If you're doing a modern trim or, or you're putting in your jacket for a continental, that's probably where you want your tuck up to be. So you find that angle and touch there with your comb and then come back and go, oh, is that the, is that the last rib? Yeah. Oh, that's the last rib. So now you have double marker for where you want your tuck up to go. Even in a modern, a German, uh, you know, anything that you're trying to do for competition, that's, that's teaching you, okay, now if that doesn't happen, uh-oh, your dog's a little too long in the body, so we gotta adjust that. You'd be able to see by making those angles or maybe your dog doesn't have enough rear angulation. So when you stack them up, they're that front, that toe on this back foot is not in the right place. So you know then you have to adjust this and you need to adjust your angles in the rear. So even doing pet trims, if you're setting in a Royal Dutch and you're, you know, you're shaving these certain areas to create jackets and you want to make a line down the center, you're still splitting that dog in half or in thirds. So it, it teaches you to start thinking about some of your grooming in angles and in you know how things are supposed to be set as opposed to I'm just buzzing this dog with a seven blade and that that's one of the reasons that we're doing that today so when we set in an English saddle it's basically the same where the jacket part is which is this big part in the front is set exactly the same as a continental 
So if you have a nice square dog, he's a little bit long in the body, so I have a tendency to set his back a little bit and then tighten his rosettes up here when I do the, um, the continental. Because if I do that, if I move those rosettes up and I set this here, it actually, and shave all this off, it makes him look like he's shorter in his body. So we do the same thing with his English saddle because I like to cover up the fact that he's a little bit too long in the body. And you can even tell by the last time I trimmed him in Asian Fusion, he doesn't look too long in the body, but he is. That's actually his body. He's longer in body than he is tall. But I made that with hair. And he additionally doesn't have a whole lot of neck. He's got decent neck, but he doesn't have a whole lot of neck. So we make it shorter here. Even when we're trimming to spray this up, when we're trimming this down, we make it a little bit shorter. It makes his neck look longer. So there's a lot of things that you can do in your pet trimming to do all that. Every Shih Tzu I groom that gets longer legs, they all get rear angulation. If I'm using an A-comb, even on the inside and the outside of the legs, I take a two or a four into their rear angulation. Everybody's like, oh my God, it's a cute butt. I don't know how you did that, but it's just cute. So those are the things that you can learn even from these fancy schmancy show trims that you might not ever do. You're still learning to look at the dog how it's supposed to be and that helps translate into your pet grooming every day. All right, so this is going to be fun. Let's shave your face first. <laughs> he's been he, he's been getting the little round, I let it grow out, but he's been getting the little round donut mustache and then I shaved his ears at one point. I have a picture and they stood up and as a breeder that freaked me out. I was like, no, oh my God. So his ear, the only thing that's going to be incorrect on him today is his ears are not, they have not grown out enough to lay down. Um, but even when we do that, you don't want, you know, you see these poodles with their ears all the way down to here. It makes them look like they got no neck and they're going to fall over. The rule of thumb is you don't ever want their ears to be longer than their point of shoulder, which is this little bone that sticks out right here. That goes for cockers poodles, pretty much anything. You don't want their ears to be longer than that. Good morning. Um, so you don't want to do that because that makes, that changes the way your dog looks. All right. And also I'm going to, I'm probably going to have to spray his tail today because that's been Asian fusion too. And it's like all like, there's, there's almost all flop. <laughs> so we're probably going to have to do something about that today too. Huh? He, he does. He's going to look like he has earmuffs, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this whole face off. And when you're trying to grow top knot, no matter what, even if it's a pet, a Shih Tzu, pet dog, or whatever that you're you always want to come right along the bottom edge of that eye. That's where you want your top knot to start, and then your face shave goes below that. So I'm probably going to pull up some extra because I don't want to lose a lot of top knot hair because we're going to be showing. And yes, I always shave with a 30 backwards. It's a show person thing. Um, you, don't, you don't have to do that in your salon, obviously. You have to follow whatever you're told to do, but always shave backwards. Forwards is not going to get enough hair off and it's going to take you 22 years to get a clean shave and you're just going to drive you crazy. So even if you're using a 10, go in reverse. When I first learned to groom, I was taught to go forward and I couldn't figure out why in the world I couldn't get a nice clean shave. So there is actually a very beautiful little poodle under here. Who's getting another white spot? What is that? Where did that come from? He's actually a blue. This is what we consider blue in poodles because he's not black black. Blue ranges anywhere from this to almost what people consider silver. It's a dark gray color. They're all born black. So especially when I have a hairy face, I take off the whole face first. I don't go down the neck, especially if it's a dog I don't know. I just take off a whole bunch of hair and then I go back.
<laughs> he hasn't had his face shaved in a while either. He's like, he's like, oh, this is like oh I remember this, but what are you, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's funny. And that, that just goes to show you, like I was talking about last time with the cocker, you know, he's, he's been getting his face shaved pretty much weekly since he was six weeks old because he's mine. I bred him and I raised him, and he's still going, what are you doing? Because we haven't done it in a while. Stick your finger right in there and stretch those lips out. You can even stick your finger into their mouth if you need to. Get all of that stuff around the lip flu. That's something your judge is going to look at. If you don't get that stuff out of there, poodle cocker, anything you're shaving their face, they, they will definitely, most judges will dock you for that either certification points or um, you know in competition however whatever whatever place you're competing at however they do their points process the other rule of thumb is the harder it is to shave a poodle face the better the face is because what does the breed standard say about their face oh nobody did their homework it says a well chiseled face so that means there's lots of little bumpies and ridges for you to go across. And you just let your clipper do it. Don't push. I say something all the time that everybody says, oh my God, it's controversial. I have never seen a case of clipper burn. Clippers don't burn. I don't care how hot they are. Unless you stick it on there and hold it like this, it's not gonna burn the dog. It's from either a dull blade or from the groomer going because you're trying to get more hair off. You're actually scraping the skin. You're not burning the dog. You're just irritating their skin and then they scratch it.